Neon Genesis Evangelion. Why am I even making a video on this? Because you know, I can describe Evangelion in two words. You want to know what those two words are? It's shit! No, seriously, final verdict, it's f***ing shit. With a rating of negative infinity out of zero, recommended anime being School Days and Boku no Piku. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. Till next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty. What? Yeah, I can't actually leave it at that, because if I did, that would make me A, an elitist troll, B, a liar, as Evangelion is actually a fantastic deconstruction of the mech genre, and C, a pussy little bitch who runs away from reviewing heavily popular anime, of which I am none. At least I don't think I am. Hmm. Anyway, it's time to actually review this thing, don't you think? Yes. Yes, it is. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcata, and welcome to Glass Reflection Today, Neon Genesis Evangelion. <sighs> okay, let's jam. In a pre-apocalyptic alternate universe, the world of Evangelion is under constant threat from angels. Mysterious Lovecraftian-like beings that appear, basically out of nowhere, with the intention of, as far as we know, destroying the entirety of the human race. So like any anime that intends to be a traditional good versus bad show, the human race has created an organization called Nerve and a collection of giant robots, known as Evangelions, to fight the oncoming threat. And of course, by some unwritten rule in anime law, all the pilots for the Avas are not highly trained professionals skilled in combat, but rather a group of inexperienced 14-year-old children who must now save the planet, or we all end up destroyed in a cataclysmic event known as the Third Impact. Of course, also unbeknownst to basically freaking everyone, is a secret society bent on the completion of the Human Instrumentality Project in order to bring about a new age of human evolution. Confused yet? Don't worry, it gets worse. Starting off is the case of Shinji Ikari. Shinji is the lead protagonist of the Evangelion series and resident whiny little bitch. Having lost his mother back before he can remember and being heavily neglected by his father Gendo, the world seems to have taken great pleasure in beating the crap out of this poor little Japanese boy, and he has never really had any purpose or meaning in his life until his father, finally finding a use for him, calls him to Nerve Headquarters in Tokyo 3 to pilot a giant robot and fight aliens for the good of mankind. Normally this sort of development would have a character develop into a more heroic and world-saving role. But of course this is Evangelion, and Shinji Ikari is our introduction to an entire cast of characters that are all equally screwed up in their own own special ways. Shinji himself suffers from major psychological issues, including a massive guilt complex that makes him believe that every bad situation he has ever been involved in, regardless of his actual influence on those situations, is entirely his fault. This gives him a self-worth comparable to most modern JRPG protagonists, minus the ability to occasionally have a backbone every once in a while. He also suffers from Hedgehog's Dilemma, as he is unable to form meaningful relationships without getting emotionally damaged by the very relationships that he is attempting to form. This of course makes him sometimes more of a social introvert than Saito from Welcome to the NHK, and it becomes a reoccurring theme with Shinji that instead of facing his problems and not blaming himself for basically everything that goes wrong, he prefers to just run the fuck away. If only he could have actually stopped blaming himself for everything and actually grew a backbone every once in a while, he would have been a much better character, but instead we got what we got. So you've already given up. Mm -hmm. Huh, pathetic. There's nothing more useless than a housebroken male. Next up is the case of Asuka Langley Soyu, a character who is so incredibly different from our whiny protagonist while suffering from almost the exact same problems. In contrast to Shinji's introvertedness, Asuka is much more outgoing, even sometimes annoyingly so, with an attitude of extreme smugness and superiority to cover up her similar anxieties. As the pilot to Evangelion Unit 2, she appears in Episode 8, showing off her impressive piloting skills and being completely badass at everything Shinji seems to have difficulties with. Her anxieties begin to come to light as the show continues on, as her mental state requires her to receive continual praise from basically everything, otherwise her self-worth begins to drop down towards Shinji levels. 
On the whole, between the three main Evangelion pilots, Asuka seems the sanest out of the three. Well, as sane as you can get for Evangelion anyways. Yes, she has a messed up childhood and really doesn't have the best of experiences during the show itself, but anytime I think back to her character as a whole, I remember just her badass moments of awesome, making this German vixen one of my favorite female anime characters. <laughs> hmm, Deva. And now we have the case of Rei Ayanami. As a character, Rei is not much to talk about without getting into the heavily spoilerific aspects of her character, as she, for the majority of the show, remains shrouded in mystery. We know that she is the test pilot for Evangelion Unit Zero, has some personal connection to Shinji's father, Gendo Ikari, and she also allows people to check off funky colored hair on your anime wildcard bingo sheet. Seriously though, like blue hair, red eyes, no one thought this was kind of weird and creepy. At all? No one? Huh. More importantly though, Rei is the iconic, emotionless doll character. The irony of this, of course, is that Evangelion's creator, Hideki Ono, created Rei to exist on the other side of the uncanny valley, having her be an example of just how creepy and inhuman an emotionless-like doll can be. Instead though, she ended up becoming her own freaking character archetype that has since exploded and is responsible for a vast number of attempted clones, all of which with the same emotionless behaviors, though with some characters getting far better developed than Rei herself. Maybe Anno shouldn't have dressed her up in a sexy, skin tight plug suit, I don't know. The last character I'm going to talk about directly is Misato Katsuragi, the operations director in charge of most of the angel battles as well as mentor to the Evangelion pilots, regardless of her qualifications as an adult role model. Her personality allows for changes depending on the situation as she is able to be calm and collected during a mission, but also to be more carefree when she's off the clock. Like everyone else in the show, she suffers from her own personal trauma, mostly stemming from being a survivor of the second impact, the catastrophic event that originally introduced angels to the human race. This gives her psychological symptoms very similar to both Shinji and Asuka, though her methods of coping far exceed theirs, allowing her to appear far more upbeat than more or less any other character in the show. This seems to be one of the more admirable parts of her character, as yes, she is as emotionally broken as basically everyone else on the show, but she still has the sense to make sure that those under her care are safe. Well, as safe as letting them fight the greatest threat humanity has ever faced, anyways. If I was to attempt to continue to explain all of the other characters, I would be here all day, as the complete range of mental nitwits far exceeds that of what is able to be talked about in a short review such as this. The vast number of character interactions and relationships in this show deserve far more than just brief mentions, so I'll let you experience them yourself when you go see them. But just know that they are all emotionally broken in some way, shape, or form, even if they are only background characters or those with very little relevance to the overall plot of the show. To say that the story of Evangelion is amazing is like saying that Twilight sucks. The majority of the community know this fact to be true, but there is a small yet radical portion of the community with radically different opinions. This is because, unfortunately, Evangelion is also the subject of immense hype, like any other show that people put on a pedestal as possibly one of the greatest animes that has ever existed. A lot of people are gonna go into Evangelion and come out of it afterwards thinking that the show really wasn't that great because it did not live up to their expectations that the hype has prepped them for. However, if you're one of those people that can look past the hype and take the show at face value, considering that it originally aired back in 1995, you should be fine. The main focus of Evangelion has always been its characters and their development. Every character presented in the show has interesting aspects that the viewer would like to be explored, and the show obliges them, though usually in a fashion that raises more questions about the characters than it answers. Ritsuko Akagi, the truth is, I am your father. <sighs> you liar. Although in addition to that, Evangelion also follows a standard mech anime with a Monster of the Week type setup. Any given episode will have a new angel appear, with the characters come up with a new way to defeat the threat that culminates in a quick battle scene before the angel explodes, usually in a symbolic cross-like fashion, before the episode ends and we get to do it all over again next week. 
But as the show progresses, the usual tropes from mech anime start to deteriorate, usually in correlation with the mental health of the main characters. Plot elements get introduced that quickly make the show change from something like Mobile Suit Gundam into a more darker representation of the genre in the same vein as Madoka Magica and, to a lesser extent, Digimon Tamers. This is further proved when the show places less focus on the battle scenes between the Avas and the Angels, and more on the real meat of the show, focusing squarely on the characters. That's right! Is there something wrong with that? I'm doing the right thing! And when I do it, the others appreciate me! The others like me then! You're lying! Huh? Don't leave me. Don't ignore me. Don't kill me! What the hell is this? Now normally I don't like discussing a show's ending to the extent of giving it its own section of the review, but my philosophy is that with any show the ending is paramount, and in the case of Evangelion it is my belief that its ending is what stopped it from being a truly great show. It's fairly well known that during the latter half of the show's production, money started to run short. I could argue that the production staff knew about this eventual shortage from very early on, otherwise we would not have had these immensely riveting scenes like this one from episode 4. Someone do something. Seriously. Fucking get to it. Please? Someone move? The local train bound for Gora is now arriving on track four. Hey, train! That'll be movement. Maybe. Or maybe not. Who knows? Just, you know, do something. The train arriving on track four is the local shuttle. And because nobody figured it out, we're gonna say it a second time. I know these messages are automated, but like, do you really have to stretch this scene out this much? Yeah, stay but like what the fuck are you doing, Shinji? Seriously. I I'm home. Well, thank fuck for that. <sighs> Welcome home. The flaws in production values slowly start to manifest as the show continues, with increasing amounts of fan service and nudity being used in an attempt to keep viewers distracted from the flaws that were becoming larger and larger as the show got closer to its eventual end. The final two episodes is where all animation quality gets thrown out the window due to lack of budget, and the show ends on a less than ceremonious conclusion that, well, kind of pissed off a good number of people. Sure, a lot of people have taken to this ending and said that it was intentional, adding on to the already existing religious symbolism. But I take such thoughts with a grain of salt, mostly because I'm not very religious personally, but also because the lack of funds makes for a much more logical explanation for what happened. Plus, Hideki Anno must also believe this ending to be bad. Why? Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have tried to remake it. Twice. The animation is definitely an area where Evangelion tended to fall harder than most in some respects. I already mentioned the financial problems that affected the animation quality of the show as it neared to a close, but honestly at times I feel like Gainax knew their budget from the get-go and skimped wherever they could. One common production shortcut that a lot of shows like to take is restricting character movement so that only a character's mouth needs to be animated. Evangelion goes a step further by having many scenes where the character who is speaking has their mouth covered or off camera, so as to further skimp by not even having the mouths moving. Though just because they skimped doesn't mean that they did not make up for it later on. For every scene where basically nothing happens animation-wise is another where everything moves in completely awesome ways. The battle scenes specifically deserve of particular merit for being some of the best animated scenes for any anime of the time, and hell are even better than some of the things coming out now almost 20 years later. So while yes, there are times that the animation is kind of non-existent, it makes up for it later on with a bang. In terms of the overall soundtrack, Evangelion is nothing extraordinary, minus one or two tracks that stand out for interesting reasons. And one of my favorite songs from the entire OST is a track called Decisive Battle. Fun fact though, as that song puts Evangelion alongside Death Note, Full Metal Panic, and Big O as soundtracks that have... lovingly borrowed riffs from other places. Don't know what I mean? Okay. Here. Let's, let's do a quick comparison. Here is Decisive Battle from Evangelion. Oh, yeah. 
And now here is a very similar song from a James Bond movie. It is interesting how Evangelion borrowed music from James Bond for its main battle theme, but hey, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery after all, so it's not completely a bad thing. The dub for Evangelion can be a little harder for people to handle than most. While overall I personally applaud the entire cast for their performances, I do admit that the actors seem to take their time in settling into their roles. And there are moments early on in the show that are wince-worthy in how some of the lines are delivered. So, you're asking me to take this thing? and go out there and fight? Correct. How can you do this to me? I thought you didn't want me. Why? Why did you have to call me now, father? Because I have a use for you. The only other notable thing as far as sound goes is the opening theme, and Evangelion's OP gets a lot of love appearing at the top of a lot of people's lists for greatest anime opening in existence. While I will admit the opening has its merits, I would never put it up that high on the list myself. In fact, I didn't. Yeah, it's catchy and all, but you know what else was catchy? The Black Plague. Just because it's catchy doesn't mean it's good. Also, if you have the time, go look up the translated lyrics for the opening, and keep in mind that the entire thing is written about Shinji. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Considering how old the show is getting nowadays, it might be harder to describe it as a modern classic, but its influence and popularity is more or less unmatched. There isn't much more to say than hasn't been said without avoiding spoilers in some form or another. Now, I could have written a whole section on the religious symbolism that takes place within the show, but let's be honest here. If you're not overly religious yourself, then most of the symbolism is just gonna fly right over your head and will most likely have absolutely no effect on your enjoyment of the series as a whole. Also, when you get around to actually buying the show, which if you're any self-respecting anime owner, you will actually get around to buying it, for the love of Haruhi, don't buy the collector's tin. Because I hate this thing. It really is a piece of shit. Look, you open it up, you can't even get your hand into it. Friggin' annoying. So, how do you get it out? Well, then you just flip it over, take the thing, oh no, 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 no. Perfect. So yeah, just go and buy the thin pack, you'll be much better off. With all that in mind, I have meticulously calculated values for the categories of story, characters, animation, sound, and my own personal enjoyment, and after having its DNA analysis confirm blue and having Holden declare, It's an angel! Has me awarding Neon Genesis Evangelion with a score of 8.06 out of 10, and rating this show Certified Frosty, a rating reserved only for the best of the best and shows too important to ignore. At the time of this video, the show has previously been licensed by ADV Films, but is currently available from Section 23 Films as ADV nipped off to the back and died. It is also available for Madman Entertainment if you happen to live in Australia. For everyone else, you're shit out of luck, as it's not even available for legal streaming at current besides possibly Netflix or something. As far as alternate anime recommendations go, I'll be quick to mention the possible Evangelion clone, Razaphon. Though if you're wanting something a bit more upbeat, then I would also highly recommend Gurren Lagann, as it is a fantastic anime also done by the same production studio, Gainax. And lastly, since I know this is going to get brought up a lot in the comments, I will get around to reviewing the rebuild of Evangelion movies at some point, most likely when they're actually finished and released in English. I will always recommend, though, that you watch this original series before going on to watch the rebuild movies, because yes, the rebuild movies are basically just a retelling of the show, and in some cases they do things a lot better, the original series has a lot more groundwork, it has a lot more character interactions and developments that the Rebuild movies just don't have because of running time. And besides, if you get to watch the show first and then watch the movies after, overall you just get to watch more Evangelion. And what's wrong with more of a good thing? So with that, I leave you. Until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty. <laughs>